Hello everyone, my name is Amanda and welcome back to another video of the Plenty Wendy. Alright y'all, if you have been following my channel for a while, know that a couple weeks ago I think, um, I did a top 5 Hoyas for beginners. So in that video, I actually just talk about you know, my recommendation of like the five Hoyas that it's very easy to care for, it's pretty affordable in terms of the pricing, and also um, it's easy to find, meaning that you can find it in your local nursery or plant shop or whatnot. And I got a lot of good feedback from that uh, video, so I decided to do a continuation of it. But this time, um, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna talk about also easy to care for Hoyas, but they are not as common. So the reason I want to do that is I um, think that maybe a lot of you guys already have the common one, like um, the Hoya canosa or the Pupacalyx or the Australis. Um, so I want to, you know, kind of introduce you guys to a little bit more special Hoyas that I have, um, and it's easy to care for in my environment. So that's actually led to my next point, disclaimer. So, <laughs> Uh, by uncommon, it means that it's uncommon in my location, in my area, or in the uh, plant community that I'm in right now. Right? So maybe it's super common for you guys, I don't know. Um, but at least for me, they are not as common. So meaning that um, you may not be able to find it in a local plant shop or nurseries, you may have to go all night, or maybe you have to go um, you know, ask uh, collectors like if they have any, right? And Second, when I say easy to care for, it's uh, it just based on again my environment, my experience, and you know like people again like my local plant community, people that I talk with that have the same plants. Um, we all come to an agreement that oh, you know it's it's yeah that one is actually pretty easy. So yep. With that being said, let's get started. Awesome. The first plant I want to introduce you, I absolutely adore this plant and it has showed up in my video many times i think <laughs> and this is my hoya botanica so you know again according to the name it's from bhutan <laughs> and i um yeah i love this plant in, uh, uh, for many reasons so number one it's it's just super easy to care for so it's meaning that um i don't do much to it other than putting it buy a grow light and word it maybe once every 10 to 14 days. Like I don't really water this plant that much because it does have a really succulent uh, foliage. And um and the bonus for this plant is it actually will turn, as you can see, it actually will turn into this like, really beautiful red uh, sheen if you put it under grow lights. And the reason like this particular leaf is red is because it's like the closest to my grow light. So you can see like this one as well, you can see like a little bit of red on the margin. Yeah, there you go. And look at this leaf. This leaf is new. Like, look at how massive it is. And then as you can see, there's also some like, you know, new grow pond coming out right here, right? And it just overall, a really, really beautiful and gorgeous plant. So now it's not like the fastest growing plant, I would say, but it's constantly, uh, it's constantly giving me new growth in a really, really reasonable pace. And most importantly, it's like it doesn't require any special environment. Like it's not in my greenhouse; it's just sitting in a regular humidity environment, which is about like I would say sixty to seventy percent max. Um, and then it sit, you know, right next to your grow lights. And like I said, I only water it once every 10 to 14 days. I don't normally water uh, more succulent um, Hoya species until the leaves start to feel soft. So this actually brings to a good point. So when you feel the leaves of a Hoya, um, to determine if you need to water it, I normally would feel the top leaves because the bottom leaves in general, you know, if they are newer leaves, they will feel softer anyway. Um, but you know, if you feel the top leaf and even the top leaf is like start to feel soft, you may want to, uh, the older leaves start to feel soft, you may want to water your Hoyas. So this is my top favorite, <laughs> uncommon, but easy to care for plants. 
Oh, so by the way, yeah, you probably won't be able to find it in your local nursery. I actually got this plant a long time ago from Gardino. It was just like a four inch pot with like, you know, not a lot of trail, like maybe just right around here. So it had grown for me a lot. Yay. So that's the first one. Great. Second one I want to go for, I'm just going to go for like, there's no particular order, just whatever easy for me to grab. So, ta-da! So this is the Hoya, um, I believe, Vortex Silata, Heart Leaf Splash. So obviously it's called Heart Leaf Splash is because the leaf is kind of heart shaped and then have this really beautiful splash on it. So now, I got this plant from Thailand about six months ago. Yeah, six months ago. And yeah, it has grown like a lot considering that I actually chop it so many times to propagate, right? So um, yeah, this guy also super easy to care for. As you can see, it's like a woolly succulent species. And you can see all this beautiful splash on it. When you put it under highlights, um, the splash will turn pink. It's just this woolly gorgeous. I have a picture on um, my Instagram. Maybe I'll post it somewhere on the screen so you can see. So now, this guy has been popping out new leaves left and right. Like every single day, I will find a new leaf. So for example, if you can see this one right here, just this, oh, sorry, just this tiny baby coming out. And there's one like right here, super red. <laughs> you cannot miss it. And look at this guy right here. So this one right here is a new leaves. And I swear to God, like, the once the new leaves start to pop out, they grow so fast. And look at, just look at the pattern on this one. It's just this really like half green and half silver. It's so gorgeous. So yeah, and then um, if you look around the vine, you can see like, yeah, there you go. Like there's some new growth on here. There's new growth on here. And yeah, and it just, it just keep giving and keep growing. I really, really like it. So yeah, so this is my Hoyer Rutixilata, I believe. Heart leaves or heart shape splash. Really beautiful. Yay. Yep. So yeah, same as the Botanica, like because it's so succulent, so I don't really water it until it's like start to feel a little soft. So they're not gonna get too soft just because of how succulent they are, but you know, you can tell the difference between like, okay, it needs water or you can leave it alone. And also, all my Hoyas are in a really, really uh, bulky mixture, as you can see. Like, you would rather, trust me, you would rather underwater your Hoyas than overwater it. Because once you overwater it, and if the uh, mixture you use is um, very peaty, like a lot of peat moss, like really dense, it for sure it's going to rot the roots. And once the root is rotten, you would have to probably cut you know, out the whole root, uh, the, the entire root system and then reboot it. So yeah, so I always default to underwater my Hoyas and put it in a super, super bulky mixture. So yep, this is my Vertex Lata Hot Leaves. Cool. All right, so the next one I have, um, I actually haven't had this one for that long. Again, I got it from Gardino Nursery, like, 85% of my oil is from Gardino Rosary. Um, but it has been growing so fast in the past couple of weeks that I'm like, wow. Like, this guy is crazy. And this is my Hoya Sa Salica. Salica, right? So again, all the names going to be um, at the bottom. So Because I know I, I probably prolonged half of those wrong. But yeah, so listen to this. This guy, when it first came in, it have one, okay, it have this one, two, three, four, and five leaves. And within like two weeks, it grow out. This two new leaves was non-existent. Like there's no leaf. It just have this like tiny grow pond. And within like two weeks, like not only that two new leaves has completely grow out really beautifully, and look at this, it starts to have a new growth pond. And there's another 
if you can see it right here there you go this new grow point right here so yeah so again i i don't do anything special to it not in my greenhouse sit right next to the botanica actually have a grow light that they share um yeah i'm stingy like they share <laughs> they share the grow lights um and yeah, I think I wore it once in the past two weeks because the leaf feel really, really succulent. So I just, you know, believe that they probably don't need to be watered. It's still in its original soil mix from Gardino, which is like not as a, you know, that bucket of a mix, but still have a lot of perlite for the aeration. Um, yeah, and then it just has been popping out new growth <laughs> left and right. So speaking of, this plant was formerly known as um, the Hoya Pupacatix White Dragon. So I think that kind of explain why it is an like, uh, easy grower. Um, it's because Pupacatix is an easy grower. And um, and yeah, but the flower, I think it's like, I'll, I'll find a picture somewhere. It's this really beautiful, just all white flower. I think that's why it was called White Dragon. But I guess later on, the uh, taxonomists decide that um, they want to call it a different species so it's Hoya Sedica highly recommended and this one is definitely more um, pricier than um, and obviously harder to find um, than the regular Pupacalyx but oh, it's so worth it it's so easy oh my goodness all right so we have three down the next one I want to show you is Ta-da! So this is my Hoya CV crystal. So CV meaning it's a cultivar. So I think I sh I forgot if I showed it before. But anyway, this is my Hoya CV crystal. As you can see, oh, look at this little leaves. Like this is like a newer leaves, right? So it's not like new, new, but like newer. Look at this like inky green with this really beautiful random splash. And this is like an older leaf. So obviously it's eventually fade into this green color. And then look at this guy right here. Oh my goodness. I love this plant so much. So I got this from Facebook. And uh, Hoya CV Crystal, it's actually a cultivar from uh, Susan Swaxfager, which is the really famous Coco Ranch um, Hoyer's lady. She's a really, um, you know, respectable um, Hoya collectors and grower. And she cultivated this uh, Hoya Silly Crystal because, um, you know, for her daughter, her daughter named Crystal. I think that's just like the sweetest thing. I wish one day, like literally my goal one day, if I can get to that, you know, level or similar level, I want to uh, name my own, um, you know, uh, Hoya cultivar after my loved one as well. So yeah. Um, Oh, see, this one even have a peduncle right here, if you can see. I didn't notice that. All right, so yeah, this one is a canosa cultivar. And that's why it's so easy to grow. I got this plant, I would say, maybe a month ago, a month or so ago. And then it has popped out at least like four or five new leaves for me. And this vine, it just won't stop growing. And you can see like there's a new one. Oops, sorry. There's a new one right here. And then along the vine, the new leaves are coming out. So one recommendation I have for you guys is when you are, when there's a new leaf coming out from your plant, don't like, don't go poke it, all right? Don't like, you know, touch it. Like you can like kind of look at it and then I'm gonna show you really carefully, but try not to poke it. But yeah, cause otherwise they will fall off, right? So yeah, so this is like, you know, again, I it's in my regular environment. It's under grow light, um, shared grow light, because I have a bunch of hoyers like on a, on a platform and then just like one grow light. And um, yeah, and because of the succulent nature, like you can see it's very succulent, just like the canosa. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't really water it until the leaves are is soft. And that's how I actually, um, <laughs> how I, uh, that's one of the important criteria is how I determine if a plant is easy. It's like, you know, if you forget to water it like once or twice, it's not going to just die on you, right? So, yep. And you can see it's also, I want to show you the really super bark. It's pretty much all bark <laughs> mixture here just to avoid overwatering. All right, y'all, you ready for the last one?
<laughs> okay, so the last one I also showed in my Hoya collection videos. Um, and I just, I love the plants and I grow it from like one night, maybe three notes cutting. And, ta-da, this is my Hoya tomentiensis. So yeah, it was just like a three or four notes cutting when I first got it uh, unrooted. And then um, I root it up. I kind of like uh, cut it up and then so I can have like a fuller plant. And this is her today. So also with the succulent species. So yeah, most of the time when you're trying to look for um, easy to care for Hoyers, you, you want to look for the more succulent ones. And yeah, so um, I really, really like this plant because, you know, it have a really interesting leaf shape. It's, it's curled up. So at the beginning, I was like, you know, is a plant thirsty? Like, is that why you curl up? But uh, no, it's when I, mean, I look up the image on Google and then I talk to the uh, uh, grower who gave me the cuttings, uh, she told me that, no, yeah, they, they grow like that. So yeah, so because she showed me her mother plant, it, 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 it was, it, it's like that. So yeah, you can see like <laughs> they are curled. And you know, it's also have the really beautiful characteristics that uh, a lot of uh, Hoyas lover like, which is this like red tint that come with when the plant is sun stressed. So this guy also, it's in my regular environment, no special humidity, like 60, 70% most. Um, and um, it does sit under a shared grow lights again, like a platform with tons of Hoyas and one grow lights. You guys gotta share, okay? <laughs> so, so yeah, so, and then like when it's like get sun stressed, light stressed, you can see this like, you know, beautiful ombre. <laughs> from the green to the red, and then this really, really nice veining. And yeah, so yeah, it was literally start from like a four, four notes cutting with maybe like seven or eight, like maybe seven or eight leaves. And then I just cut it up and then it just start growing. And then, yeah, it's very hard to see, but you can kind of see some new grow pond, like right inside here. And yeah. It's just really beautiful and easy plant. Like this mine, there's new growth coming out as well. So yeah, this is my last but not least, absolutely one of my favorite, easy but uncommon Hoyas. Awesome. All right, so what do you guys think? I, um, yeah, I absolutely adore, like, all the side like, Hoyas and I think it will be fun uh, for me to share some of the more uncommon one like meaning that again you know you may not be able to find it in your local nursery but you know you can take a little bit online and you may be able to find it and they're just so easy it's like the, the, the beauty they don't ask for much they just give you growth and they give you the beauty and I think that's one thing I actually really appreciate with plants is like you know the, the the way that they give and give and give and you know as long as you give it some love back you take care of it and it will grow for you um so yeah so that's all I have for you uh today let me know what you think um do you have any of these plants I like, do you have the same experience with me like is it like easy for you or is it's it's not so easy for you um, so yeah, let me know. So one last reminder before I let you guys go is I do have a um, second part of my propagation workshop coming up uh, this Saturday, actually. Um, it's at 11 a.m. I'm going to post the link in the details below. And, um, you know, it's going to be a continuation of my propagation series. Um, so this time I'm going to talk about propagating via air layering, which is super helpful and super fun. Um, it's, it's really greatly increase your chance uh, to successfully multiply your plants. Um, even the plant is like slower growing and slower uh, to root. And then I have some Hoya seed. Um, too, that I want to, um, you know, show a light propagation with you guys as well. Um, so yeah, so I think that will be really fun. Uh, the event is free. Um, I'm collaborating with the Seed and Soul Club, 
which is an amazing, amazing plant club that, you know, we have in the Bay Area, California, that, you know, we, we have people together, we do plant swap, uh, we do virtual workshop uh, right now just because of the COVID situation. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to check it out. I would love to see you there. You guys can throw some Q&A, live Q&A at me. Um, that would be really fun. And as always, if you like this video and if you have any feedback, uh, please click like and leave a comment below so I can do better to serve you guys in the future. If you want more uh, Hoyas video or plenty video, uh, make sure you click the subscribe button. It will really, really help me um, to produce more for you guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.